Hi everyone, my name is Marlene and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be getting into the Christmas spirit. And <laughs> I absolutely love the Christmas holidays, whether it's the lights or the food or just the general sense of magic and wonder that many people seem to feel around this time of year. There are many reasons why people get this sort of tingling sensation around Christmas time. I know for me, ever since I was younger, I remember watching movies or having my parents tell me about someone called Santa Claus. <laughs> and for anyone that's never heard about Santa before, Santa is a completely normal person. He's just a man that wears red, a red outfit, <laughs> and he goes around the world delivering presents to people based off of some arbitrary measure of who's naughty and nice <laughs> and just gets helped by different elves or a reindeer to be able to do this. And when I was younger, I remember uh, waking up sometimes and, and going and finding some gifts delivered to me that were from Santa. But I'm not sure about you, but as I've gotten older, this has just stopped happening and I have no idea what's going on. I don't know where Santa is. And so in today's video, we are going to be doing some investigating to figure out what's going on with Santa, what's happening with this whole present situation. And to do this, <laughs> we're going to be using a deep learning model for image classification so that we can train our model to be able to identify whether or not Santa is in a group of images or not, just in case someone spots Santa somewhere, catches him on CCTV or something, then our model can be able to identify that that's Santa and let us know right away. So if you're interested in learning more about deep learning and image classification, please keep watching. All right, <laughs> well, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to import a bunch of different dependencies. I'm starting out by importing NumPy. I'm also importing Pillow. We're also importing Keras, which is an amazing deep learning interface. It's an open source Python library. Next thing we want to do is also look at the directories that we have for this project. And the main directory we want to look at is the is that Santa directory. If we look in the training data set, we also have two other subdirectories, a not a Santa directory. And this just has a bunch of images in it. Let's click on this one. Like you can see, that's not Santa. Let's pick another one. That's also not Santa. <laughs> and so it has a bunch of pictures in it that all present things that are not Santa. And in the Santa one, we have predictably some images that represent what Santa looks like. Um, different types of Santa. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-process our images. And to do this, we're going to use the Keras image data generator. And all we're going to do is feed our images into this data generator. And it's going to change our images into a form that the model can be able to work with and understand. So it's basically just going to change it into pixels or numbers. And to do that, let's go ahead and write some code for that. So we're going to write train data gen. I had already written that out. Okay. So rescale is a value by which we will multiply the data before any other processing. And the reason why we're doing this is because all of our images consist of RGB values between 0 and 25 and 255. And this value, these, this range is way too large for our model to be able to handle and process well. And so we want to scale that down and have target values between zero and one. So that's the reason why we're using rescale in that way. We are also going to have one for the training. We're going to create an image data generator for the training data set and one for a separate one for the testing data set. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to use the flow method to load images from the data set directory or from the is Santa, is that Santa directory. So to do that, we are going to create a variable that will keep the, um, uh, the images. Uh, we're going to call that train set. We're going to add in the pathway to our directory, which is is that Santa. And we are going to specifically use the training directory there. We are also going to add in, we're going to use the target size 
argument there and we're going to make sure our images are 150 by 150 just to standardize all of the images. We are then also going to um, choose a class mode of, we're going to choose a class mode of binary, which will just let our model know that, um, this just lets our model know that the label is either going to be a zero or a one. A zero is going to be, represent no Santa in the, image, in the image, and one is going to represent the fact that Santa is in the image. Okay, so then after that, we are also going to add the batch size, and the batch size will just be used later on in terms of how many images at the time at a time should a model should our model load in. So we're going to choose 32 for that, and then we're going to do pretty much the same thing. I'm going to copy this and paste, and do pretty much the same thing for the testing. This is just going to give us our images on a pre-process level. So let's go ahead and run that. Great, that worked. We're ready to actually go ahead and build our model. We are going to be using a convolutional neural network and sometimes they're called CNNs, but convolutional neural networks are a type of neural network that specifically is designed to work with image data. And when we talk about neural networks in general, a neural network is a type of mathematical model that is made out of different connected nodes or neurons, as some people would call them. And these neurons are organized into different layers. Uh, and it's called deep learning if those layers, there are more than three of those layers. So typically the most basic neural network is going to be made of an input layer, hidden layers, and then an output layer. And so the input layer receives the data and the output layer then produces the final result. When we think of the hidden layer, we can kind of think about it as elves that are working in Santa's workshop. And these elves need to sort through different presents to be able to determine which ones belong to which child. And so each elf has a specific task. We can think about it as the layer. So each elf is kind of like a layer in that hidden layer. So maybe one elf is told to examine the present wrappers and see their colors. So this elf could be like, okay, this is a blue present. So all of the blue presents go to the specific area. And then the next elf will maybe examine the tags, the name tags that are on the presents and see, okay, this is Johnny's tag who also wants a blue wrapper. And so then finally the last elf will then decide that, okay, this is Johnny's present with a blue wrapper, and so it belongs to this specific child. So overall, a CNN uses multiple layers of calculations to be able to analyze and process input data, ultimately making a prediction or classification based off of the data it's received. We're now going to actually build our model and to do this, we can use Keras, and it's pretty much just one line of code. I'm just going to type it out right now. It might take a little bit of time, so let's go ahead and do that. So model. Okay, so I am done, and hopefully um, we should be able to build the model. The first thing I want to point out as well is that we are building using a sequential model, and this just means our layers are going to be arranged in a linear way. Um, also, each layer is doing something different on the data that it's, that we are fed, feeding, going to feed in to our model, and so each layer is kind of performing a different transformation so that ultimately the last layer can make a decision. Um, so let's go ahead and run this, and hopefully if I didn't make a mistake, it should work. Yeah, that worked! <laughs> So the next thing we want to do is to be able to, this is kind of handy if you are just wanting to understand a bit more about your model, which is to visualize it. And so you can just call model.summary and that should let you just get more information about your model, the different layers and the different parameters that are available in, uh, in your model. So the next thing we're going to do is to compile our optimizer. And the optimizer is what will observe the loss. So it, it will look and see, was our loss prediction accurate? If it wasn't accurate, how much was it inaccurate by? And it's going to adjust the weights and biases so that our model kind of changes to make better predictions over time. So we literally just need one line of code to be able to compile this. We're going to download a specific optimizer from TensorFlow called RMS Prop. So let's go ahead and write the code for that. So we're gonna just say from TensorFlow we're going to write model dot compile. Um, we're choosing our optimizer here. 
Again, we're setting that to RMS prop. A function we're going to use to measure how accurate our prediction is and that we're going to use the cross binary cross entropy um, for that. And then the metric, the metrics we're going to use, the metric we are going to use is accuracy, um, is how we're going to tell whether or not our model is performing well or not. So let's go ahead and run this and that compiled as expected. Now finally, we are going to train our model. Again, this doesn't take a lot of code to write because we're using Keras and we just use the we call the fit function from model and add a few different parameters. We're going to throw in the training um, data set into there and we're going to let the model know as well that the validation data set is going to be our test set as well from earlier on. So let's go ahead and write the code for that. So I should mention that the number of epochs is the number of times that our model is going to run over or train on the data set. So we're choosing that it should do sort of 10 iterations of training uh, on our data set. So let's also choose the validation data set. Great, that looks about right. So let's run it to see if we haven't made any mistakes and that should hopefully start training. Excellent, this is running <laughs> as expected. And um, yeah, a couple of things that I will mention as well is that as the model is training, you can actually see the accuracy on the side. So right here to our right, the value accuracy is 0 0.8 at the moment. And we want to hopefully see that accuracy rate increasing as the model continues to train. Right now we can see that it is, so hopefully it will continue to do that. Let's, and I will be back once it's finished training. Okay, finally our model has finished training. It actually doesn't, it didn't take a long time. Honestly, if you are being very serious about this and have more time to work on this, I would definitely recommend training your model for a little bit longer or, or testing out different epoch uh, amounts. And sometimes when you train your model for longer, you're just going to get a higher amount of accuracy and that will be great in terms of your predictions will be more accurate. So right now we are getting an accuracy of 0 0.9 and that is enough for this tutorial today. If you would like to test it out on your own, I would definitely encourage you to uh, do some longer training. Finally, let's go ahead and test our model. We are going to use Keras to do this to just make sure whether or not we're going to see if all of this worked and it can actually predict whether Santa is in a picture or not. For this next sign, we are actually going to call this answer because that will give us our prediction. We're going to write model.predict and then we're going to pass in that images variable that we just made with our data inside it. And this is actually going to give us a value of either one or zero, which will correspond to whether Santa is in the picture or not. So let's go ahead and also write an if statement that will print out what the model has actually said. And, and we will get to see whether our prediction was right or wrong. We know because we're passing in test data from the Santa file. Actually, I should write, is that Santa? I should write, this should be Santa slash test. Um, so we know that Santa is in this picture, but we're hoping that our model will predict as well. So we're gonna say if answer uh, zero, zero, so that in. So that's all we need to do. Let's cross our fingers, hopefully this worked. So let's uh, actually see, hopefully I also didn't make any mistakes writing the code. Let's run that. Oh, I did make some mistakes. Let's see what's here. No such file as Santa test Santa. <laughs> Just had to fix a couple of other things in my code, but now it looks like it, it should be where it's at. It should be the correct thing on the screen right now. So let's run this and see what the prediction is. This is Santa, it worked, <laughs> perfect. Just to confirm as well that indeed what we, our computer is telling us is right, let's go ahead and also uh, just display the image that we passed through to the screen just to make sure that it is Santa. So let's just say image equals image dot open and we'll pass the uh, image that we had earlier there and then let's run that. 
And there is Santa. So that worked. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and end this tutorial here. Like I said before, this model doesn't perform absolutely perfectly. The accuracy is not at 100%. And you can do a, a range of different things to be able to improve that accuracy, either, like I mentioned before, changing the optimizer or the loss function, or just actually just running more iterations of training on that data set as well. Hopefully it was helpful in getting you started with deep learning, with with Python. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please share the video as well if you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next one. Merry Christmas, by the way. Merry happy holidays or Merry Christmas, whatever it is that you'd like. And I will see you in the next one.